Uh, well, I mean, I thought a little bit about the match. I was obviously pretty upset afterwards uh, for a couple of days after that, and yeah, after going back, you know, to, to Seneca and, and seeing it and stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I just kind of moved on a bit after that or or whatever, but it seemed seemed to help. So I got on the practice court, you know, just a few days afterwards, and before and when I'd lost in Slam finals, I'd struggled for you know a few weeks, sometimes months afterwards, and. I went back on the practice court a few, five days afterwards and felt pretty good um, mentally, which you know is often the most important thing. And I worked hard, and that was it. How do you move forward from a good moment like the gold medal match? Is is it hard to kind of take yourself out of savoring that and move beyond it? Yeah, a little bit, but uh, I think <laughs> the thing with tennis, you don't. You don't get that much time to enjoy wins um, that much. There's always a tournament the the next week, so you know it's something that you, you get used to, um, and you've just got to try and try and look forward. It's, in, it's going onto a new surface, and you know that presents new challenges. Um, you know, I didn't, you know, I felt good after <laughs> after winning the gold medal, but then you know coming over and playing on hard courts again, your body starts to hurt a little bit, it's sore on the joints. You have to work on different shots um, as well, so you know that can occupy your mind a bit, you know, because you're not feeling great straight away. Um, you know, if you win a tournament on a hard court and go the next week and play again on a hard court, you're normally feeling really good. But switching surfaces is is a new challenge and something that you know has taken me a few days to adjust to. How, how strange was it to kind of have a do-over for Wimbledon because you have the next tournament. That's so soon that you've probably never had one that's that big again. So soon, it's on the same surface, which you don't usually get in grass. It's in the same building as you were before. Did it seem like a, kind of a, a confluence of of just coincidences that, that added up to a kind of a perfect storm for you? Um, well, like, like I said, the, the, having had that experience of the Wimbledon final definitely helped going into the. The final of the Olympics. Um, I mean, I, I felt like I moved probably the best I have on a grass court going into going into the Olympics. I practiced really well the week beforehand, and that's probably because we, you know, we normally only play on the grass for three, three, four weeks a year. We play two tournaments on it, which, you know, you're never. I guess going to play your your best after just a few weeks. You know, we play. So it was 11 months, obviously, after Wimbledon last year. Then, you know, when I played, played Queens, obviously, so it took me, you know, lost the first round of Queens and stuff. So, you know, I think the, the getting to play on the grass for eight weeks, by the end of it, I was playing very, very good tennis, and I wish the grass court season was longer. Andy, there seems to have been a lot of negative energy surrounding British sports in the decades previous to this Olympics mostly around the football team, but also other sports as well, and the media coverage is getting. Do you think this Olympics and having 20-something gold medals, one of which is yours, will sort of change the mood of sports in your country? Well, yeah, I hope so. Um, I mean, I you know, said throughout the Olympics, the whole, the whole country was behind all of the athletes, all of the sports. Um, the press was right behind the, the athletes. As, as well, and there was just a real positive atmosphere and positive vibe going around the the whole of the the British team. And in my opinion, that helps. It helps a lot when you get the support of of uh, of the the public and and the press getting behind everyone. Um, I'm sure that's probably one of the reasons why um, we had the most successful Olympics ever. And you know, I hope. Because of how, how the Olympics went, we'll get loads more kids playing all sorts of different sports, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. The whole, you know, said so it's the most fun I've had on a tennis court. Obviously, winning helps, uh, you know, but that the whole week, the support of you know the crowd, the atmospheres, and the matches, you know, were unbelievable. My brother went to see loads of different sports and said it was the same everywhere, and yeah, it was great, great to be part of that. Do you think that will help you moving forward, that positivity? Yeah, you know, I think so. That After Wimbledon, you know, when I lost the support of, 
everybody from my friends and, and family to people I bumped into in the street was I'd never experienced that before and that you know was another reason maybe why I moved on uh, a bit quicker from the Wimbledon final than I had done in the past and made, gave me that motivation to get back on the court and practice and not kind of be down and, and stuff and it, it helps I mean it, it definitely makes makes a difference when when everybody's uh, getting behind the uh, you know the the athletes and you know the press are, are into it as well, and it was it was a great great month. Andy, you uh, you've had some success here. How do you like playing here, and how does this event rank on the tennis calendar? Obviously, it's not a major, but it's it's deemed a pretty good deal at least uh, from the people that live here. Yeah, well, I've I mean it's the first Masters series I ever won here, and. So I have very good memories from it. I played it the first time they gave me a wild card into the tournament when I was 18. It was the first Masters Series I ever played as well. Um, so I've always enjoyed coming back here because yeah, they, they've been treated very well and I've played played some, some good tennis here too. Um, it's obviously the, the final tournament before the, the US Open, so you know it's a good chance to see where, where your form's at. And often the, the guys that that play well here tend to, to go pretty deep into the into the US Open as well. So it's a very, very important tournament for the players. Andy, Betsy Ross from uh, CincyTennis.com. One of our uh, followers, Christine Turner, asked about Yvonne Lindell and how he has helped you on the physical side, the mental side, or both? Uh, n not the physical side, but the yeah the mental side for sure. Tactically, uh, he's very good. Uh, very minor technical. Uh, very minor technical things, but you know, also just his experience knowing how to, to schedule, um, you know, your tournaments in, how to, you know, like a year like this year is incredibly busy and very different to, to what we're used to with, with the Olympics. Um, you know, having someone like him around who understands that um, and can also pass on his experiences to not just me but the, the rest of my team as well. He's been a huge. Uh, huge benefit and um, also after I lost Wimbledon having someone like him who's been through that before um, to talk to and the best ways to, to deal with it and, and move on from it um, all that stuff's uh, helped and that's why I wanted to, to work with them and um, we've not just me but my whole team's in, enjoyed having him around and hope uh, hope he's enjoyed it too. And Prior to Wimbledon, there had been a lot of questions about the success of your coaching relationship with Lindo. And now after your performance at Wimbledon and the gold medal, do you feel a sense of vindication maybe? Or are there more earmarks, you know, other things that you want to accomplish before you can say this has been a successful relationship? Uh, well, I think, uh, I mean, I said at the start, because even in Australia, I played great. Great tennis there. I had a really, really good match with Novak um, in the semi-finals, and you know was 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 close to <laughs> to winning that one. You know, I said there that 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 match or that tournament wasn't because of anything I'd done with Ivan. We'd been working together for just one week before the Australian Open. You know, we would see the results hopefully in six to nine to nine months. Um, you know, all the things that we worked on and, and practice after Australia. And, all the bits of advice he's given me um, has all started to, to add up and I mean I've done stuff like I've never never been to a Wimbledon final before um, so that was a, you know that was a first um, and obviously the Olympic goal was the biggest biggest win of my career so I think it's been it's been a positive start we're only seven eight months into the relationship I hope we work together for you know quite a few more years and he seems very motivated. I'm very motivated, and hope it continues. Where's this question? Where's your gold medal, and what'd you do to celebrate other than you know common sense of uh, Well, <laughs> the night the night of the the match, we did a did a lot of press uh, stuff. I got home at like two thirty that morning, and then we started the next day at like eight in the morning. I did like three four hours that morning, and then. In the evening on Monday, I went out with with all my team um, and had you know, had a nice nice dinner. And then Tuesday morning we came uh, came to Toronto and 
that was uh, that was it. Really, <laughs> really, uh, really fun way to celebrate. Um, and then uh, the medals, they they were on top of a cabinet. Um, and I spoke to my girlfriend today and asked what she'd done with them, and she said she'd left them there. So I need to. I'll try and uh, try and get them in a better place when when I get back. Probably a pretty good tip for the day or something. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So.